Hello and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video on types of data. In this video, we're going to look at the various different types of data that you as a management accountant will be expected to source and then process to turn into tangible information that can be used by decision makers. So it's a very important part of the SEMA syllabus, particularly as data and digital aspects of the syllabus become more and more important. And if you do like this video and you want to see more, then please like and subscribe at the bottom of the screen. We're going to be releasing lots of videos relating to the objective tests, the case study, and also to general exam technique. And also visit the website www.astranti.com for more information and more samples. And we can break down the types of data into three key elements whether they are quantitative or qualitative, whether it is primary or secondary data, or continuous and ad hoc data. I'm going to explain each of these and give an example. And the running example we're going to use is that of a pie shop. So what would quantitative data be for a pie shop? Well, it would be the answer to a question such as how many steak pies were sold in the last week. Now, this is something that is a fact, it is a figure, it's not open to interpretation. We have our pie shop, we sell pies, one of them is a steak pie, and how many of those steak pies did we sell in this week? It's very clear cut, and essentially what quantitative data can be defined as is anything that can be measured numerically. So it's very accurate and it's correct, but it doesn't necessarily give you any in-depth insight into what to do for the future. You can look at how many steak pies you've sold this week, but what does that really tell us? Does it tell us that steak pies are the thing that people actually want, or is it just that they bought them because that was all that was available? It doesn't really delve into the actual habits of the shopper. Whereas qualitative data is, is not measured numerically and it is more open to interpretation. So an example of a question that an organization might ask if it was trying to find the qualitative data would be, what do the customers think about our service? Now this can't be measured numerically. You could try and measure it numerically by giving it a score out of 10, but it's still open to interpretation. It's not as clear cut as how many pies have we sold this week. And as a result of that, it is open to interpretation. It's also open to the attitudes of the individuals at the time that they respond to your query. So, for example, if they're having a particularly bad day and they didn't want to be bothered by a survey, so they said, oh, yeah, no, it wasn't really good. So, you know, I'm going to give that a bad score. Then that's not really a true reflection of the quality of service because it is based on that person's opinion and what some people find to be bad service others will think is just okay service, for example. So as a result, it can often be quite a lot less reliable. But the advantage of qualitative data over quantitative data is that it does provide a more in-depth insight. If you score the customer service out of 10 and you get a 7 out of 10 average, then that's all well and good, but it doesn't necessarily tell you how to improve. But if you ask questions relating to what they think, how they could improve. You might get people saying that they could be friendlier. You might get people saying that they could be quicker, etc. And that will be something that you can actually use to improve the customer service rather than just giving it a score. Next thing we're going to look at is whether it is primary or secondary data. And primary data is obtained for a specific purpose. It's brand new information, brand new data that doesn't currently exist and is sourced by an organization for a specific purpose. So if the pie shop wanted to uh, ask people what kinds of flavors they should introduce. So they're going out and they're actually asking people, what are these flavors that you would like to see? And then we can make a decision based on that. So as a result, it's accurate and it is reliable. This can depend on the source, how much you trust the individuals that are going out and sourcing the information. They aren't just filling out the questionnaire themselves, but it does 
help you to answer a very specific question. If we just want to know which new pie we should introduce, this is how we go out and source the data. And another problem with it though, is that it can be very expensive. We've got to take all our staff and we've got to go out sourcing data, asking people on the streets, etc. It's not particularly cost effective. And secondary data is far more cost effective, but it is using research carried out by others. And therefore it's quite limited in its scope and also its accuracy. And when specific information is required, it can be quite ineffective. Unless there is some sort of body of government statistics that lists everyone's favorite pie flavors, which is very unlikely, then it's not going to be useful in answering this question here about obtaining information over new pie flavors. But it can be useful for things that are more generic, such as if you were looking to hire new staff. And in order to try and hire new staff, in order to try and create your recruitment policy and your recruitment strategy, you needed to know what the unemployment rate was in the area. Now, there would be a list of those statistics on a government website. So in that case, it would be very easy just to go to get the research that has already been done by others. And in that instance, it is very cost effective. The final element relates to the time. So whether it's continuous or ad hoc data and continuous, as the name suggests, is something that requires continual analysis. Not something that you just look at once and say, yep, yeah, that's all good. We won't worry about that again. So an example of this would be weekly pie sales. You don't just measure how many pies you sell in one week and then say, that's how many pies we sell. And we're just going to assume that we sell that many every week and we won't bother with it any further. Of course, you need to review it every week and see if it went up, whether it went down, and then you can identify the weeks that it went up and you can think, well, what did we do in that week? And can we do it in other weeks, etc.? You have to monitor it continuously. And ad hoc data, on the other hand, is something that is just required for a one-off issue. You don't need to review this every single week or every month or quarter, etc. So an example would be whether our pie shop should stock ginger ale. So we think, well, should we stock it? Let's do a bit of research. Perhaps we'll ask some customers as they come into the shops, have you ever drunk ginger ale before? Would you be interested in purchasing ginger ale? Is it one of your favorite soft drinks, etc.? And if you get a lot of negative feedback and a lot of people say that, no, we don't like ginger ale, then you've got your answer. We asked quite a few people over the course of a week and they all pretty much said, that they don't want ginger ale, so we won't stock it. You won't continuously ask that question again and again and again every week, hoping for a different answer or to just continually check that people still don't want the organization to stock ginger ale. So that's a breakdown. Again, it's a very basic, very much an introduction to different types of data. There's a lot more about data in the SEMA syllabus. And if you are interested in learning more about that and you want to learn more about that, then please visit the website www.astranti.com for more information on the, the study texts and the videos that we create. But I hope this has been a good introduction into the various different types of data and perhaps a breakdown of the different elements of it. So the nature of it itself, whether it is quantitative and measured numerically, whether it's qualitative, allowing for more in-depth insight, whether it's primary data that you are specifically sourcing for a purpose or secondary data, which is useful for more general decisions, but not useful for specific decisions. And finally, the time frame, whether it needs to be done regularly, such as monitoring your sales, or whether it is a particular issue that just needs monitoring on a one-off basis. And you, if you have liked and enjoyed this video, then please do like and subscribe at the bottom to see more videos from Astronauty. We're going to be producing quite a lot over the coming weeks and months.